morning, everybody. Good morning. There you go. All right. So, a few things to start this morning. First is, we want to say thank you to whoever left the beautiful mums. You can see there's four of them up here, and they were just left at the church door for us. So, whoever did that, thank you. We appreciate it, and we're going to enjoy having them in worship with us. Um, anybody, youth group, we will have Zoom meeting today at 2 o'clock. We're working on our October 4th Youth Sunday. So all of our youth who are in 6th through 12th grade are encouraged to be a part of that. Also, there is going to be a regional youth event once a month, and that will be happening today at 5 p.m., and we're encouraging all of our middle and high school youth to join in on that link as well. You can make some new friends around the region who are Disciples Youth and see some old friends from church camp. So if you need any of those links, contact me. Also, Meeting Jesus at Home is going to be at 4 p.m. today. And Calandra is going to be up front after the service. She'll hand you a bag if you need the link she has a paper with the link on it and then also a paper for the craft that wouldn't fit in the bag so she will hand those out to our youth today our children i mean sorry um nominating committee continues to work we appreciate those who have already said yes and yes thank you definitely and those who are prayerfully considering so um, we do have food donation tomorrow, drop-off. It's over under the carport by the church van from 10 to 1. Our last donation, we had 150 items donated, which is just wonderful. So, thank you all. Um, there is a board meeting tomorrow night on Zoom at 6 o'clock. And um, we hope each of you received the news about um, it's the old church email about our inside worship service. The procedural team met this past Thursday and we have made the difficult decision to postpone our start from October, from September 27 to October 11th. And that is because Nelson County now has an incident rate of 11.4%, which puts us in a red zone. And the CDC recommendations are to limit inside gatherings if you're over 10%. We still need a volunteer to take text messages or calls to keep track of who is planning to come inside when we do move, have that service inside. And we also must have volunteers who are willing to help sanitize after that worship service. All right, uh, last couple things. Band questions of the Bible is Wednesday evenings at 6 p.m. if you're looking for a chance opportunity to talk about your faith to learn some more about what you believe and why hope you'll join us this wednesday at six and um, that's on zoom ask me the link and uh, face masks have arrived they've almost all been picked up we still have a few face masks up there and a few of the bbs t-shirts that people ordered and haven't picked up yet so if you haven't make sure you pick it up today please and let us prepare our hearts and minds by listening to our prelude.
Let us come together with our call to worship and let us read responsibly. We are disciples of Christ, a movement for wholeness in a fragmented world. As part of the one body of Christ, we welcome all to the Lord's table as God has welcomed us. Let us please bow our heads for a prayer of invocation and the Lord's Prayer. Almighty and most wonderful God, we do thank you for the beauty of this day. But we are reminded of your great creation going on all around us, time and time again, season in and season out, throughout your universe far beyond our comprehension. We just ask that as we come to this time, that we will focus our hearts and minds upon you and realize your presence more fully among us. We thank you for this time of praise and prayer. And we remember the prayer that Jesus taught those first disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's sing together our opening hymn number 59. to learn new things too. I had to learn that when you and I are sharing a microphone, we have to keep both of our mouths pointed right at the microphone so people can hear us, right? 
Oh, good job, good job. So, what other things do you think are new that people are learning? Oh, you think people are learning new ways to do school? Yeah. Do you think that's easy? No, it's not easy, is it? It's hard for students and for teachers because they all want to be together like they normally do. What else is different? Oh, well, church is definitely different. We don't usually sit in our cars at church, do we? No, we don't. No, usually church is in there, isn't it? So we have to do things differently sometimes. Is it easy to learn new things? Oh, it's easy for you? Well, you're a very smart flow. So, it can be, it can be easy to learn new things. Sometimes it can be hard. And, but you know what? We keep at it, don't we? We keep learning together. And we know that when we learn new things, God is helping us learn, right? So, we have to just do our best and know that God is with us, even if we're outside in a parking lot, because actually I kind of like it out here, the beauty of the creation. We really think about God out here, and but I also like it inside too. So there's lots of good ways that we can be a part of. See, we're learning new things again. We got to get that sound system working right. Huh. Okay, but there's lots of good ways that we can learn together, but we always know that God's helping us learn. Why don't we invite the children to say our prayer? Because sometimes it's nice to do things that are very familiar to us. Dear God, we thank you for Jesus. Dear God, we thank you for the children. Amen. As we're preparing for our prayer hymn, we would invite you if you have a... Okay, we're not. We're doing offering right now. But after that, if you have a prayer concern, please feel free to text that to me. You can text me your prayer concern in case we've missed anything. Thank you. I do believe it's been rather amazing that even through a pandemic, uh, through uh, unrest, that we have been able to be church in new and different ways. The ministry of the church has not stopped. It may have been altered a bit than what we would normally do, but the ministry of the church still goes on. And your giving is needed we know there are those who have fallen on hard times and are struggling with a different job or job loss. But still, we all have something to give. And we should give out of thanks, out of a sense of joy, knowing that even through rough times, God is taking care of each and every one of us. Let us pray. Almighty and most wonderful God, we do thank you for what will be given. And we dedicate it to your will, to your purposes, to your mission and your ministry in this, your kingdom, that is still coming upon the earth. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Reminder, you still can give online. Go to the church website, and that is available to you as well. Let us come together and sing once again.
as we come to a time of prayer together as a community of faith. We want to remember those among us who have special needs at this time. Uh, also, you will be emailed a, a full prayer list uh, today. So let's keep these folks in prayers. Let's keep Jeff, a uh, cousin of uh, Sherry, in our prayers. He has COVID-19 and has uh, been on ventilator for 14 days, but he's breathing on his own a little bit. So let's continue to keep Jeff in our prayers. Let's keep Jean, uh, Franklin's wife, who will be having a hip replacement next month in our prayers. Uh, let's keep uh, Jimmy A. in our prayers as he is having treatment for a blood clot in his leg. He is uh, at home recovering. Let us keep Randy M., brother of Mike M., in our prayers. And Diane, also a friend of Mike M., in our prayers. Let's keep uh, Emma M., daughter of Amanda and Chris, having major oral surgery uh, this next week in our prayers. Let's keep Debbie B., sister-in-law of Kelly and Julie A., who is in a medically induced coma after surgery. Let us keep Debbie in our prayers. Let us keep uh, Chris, uh, brother-in-law of mine, and, uh, uh, excuse me, brother-in-law of uh, my brother uh, Greg and his wife Christy. His body is rejecting a kidney transplant and we'll have more tests on Monday, but let's keep Chris in our prayers. Let's keep Reverend Don M., a Kentucky Disciple Minister, uh, who is recovering from unexpected spinal surgery. Let's keep the family of Reverend uh, Dwight Bailey, a disciple pastor who died, in our prayers. Let's keep the family of Walt N. in our prayers as his memorial service was held last Wednesday. Let's keep uh, Beth C., sister of Barbara B., in our prayers. Let's keep the family of uh, the late Supreme Court Justice, Ruth uh, Bader Ginsburg, in our prayers. Let's keep the firefighters in Oregon, Colorado, California, and the, the rest of the Pacific Northwest, plus those in the fire's path, losing family, friends, home, and businesses. Let's keep our teachers and staff working in school and online as students learn in new ways. And let's continue to keep our frontline workers, our medical folks, our grocery store workers, our first responders, our, our police officers in prayers as well. And we have a few more. Yeah. Let's keep a uh, uh, praise report. Uh, John S. has been uh, cleared of cancer. So let's uh, give God thanks and praise. God thanks and praise for that at this point. Oh, yeah. I don't think I'll ever say again, give the Lord a honk of praise, but that's all. Right. Let's come together in prayer as a community of faith, please, at this time. Oh, my mighty and most wonderful God. We are grateful and thankful that you do hear our prayers. You are so far beyond our mere understandings. Maker, creator, architect, sustainer of this universe and many more beyond, and yet you care about each and every one of us. You love us. You, you are concerned with our relationship that we have with you. As individual Christians and as a community of faith. May we always strive to be your people, to do your will, to look at our lives and examine them daily so that we can free ourselves from those things that keep us from loving you and one another as fully as we should. Take away our pride and selfishness. Take away our greed for all things. Give us a thankful heart, a 
heart full of love and equality, a heart that sees things as you see things, as all people as our sisters and our brothers. See the beauty of your creation and respect and love it as well. We do want to pray for each and every one that's been mentioned to this day in prayer for those that are ill. We ask that your hands of healing be resting upon each and every one of them. We do pray for Dwight's family and Walt's family. We do pray for all those who know loss at this time. May you send to them your comforter of your Holy Spirit to, so they will know that they are loved and not forgotten. They are not abandoned, but you are with them, standing with them in the midst of their grief and their loss. Encourage us as a community of faith to continue to strike out and do new things in your name, to reach new people, to extend salvation and faith and love and peace to all in whom we come into contact, virtually and in person. We just thank you for the awesome opportunities that lie ahead and the wonderful changes that you are bringing now and give you all the praise for what is and what will come. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 20, verses 1 through 16. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you what is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon, and again three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock he went out and found others standing around and said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual full daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more. But each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner saying, These last worked only one hour, and you've made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day in the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. Thanks be for God's holy word in our lives. This is a passage about generosity, but it's also one about equality, which seems pretty timely right now. Now before you start wondering where you're going with this, I want to stop you and say what I want to talk about today is the Bible, but we need to remember the Bible, God, and Jesus are about justice and equality, mercy, love, and compassion. In our scripture, we've read about an odd sort of justice and equality. This landowner has done well by everyone he hired regardless of when they started working. The late hires were probably thrilled to receive a full day's wage for an hour of work. But the ones 
who started early thought that was not fair. Let me ask you this. Would you think it was fair if you worked eight to 10 hours and got paid the same amount as someone who worked one hour? Probably not. We could put it more in perspective by saying, would you think it was fair if you were getting paid 75 cents to a dollar that someone else made? Probably not. The readers of that time would agree with you. They might have had trouble with this parable because they were committed to justice. That meant they believed in equal pay for equal work. If I work this long, I get this. You work this long, you get that. The parable starts out as a pretty familiar story. Landowners going out at the start of the day to hire some extra day laborers. But it takes an odd turn because they didn't usually keep going back to the marketplace and hiring more workers. They got what they needed at the start. But this landowner keeps going out and going out again and going out again and hiring more throughout the day, and then he pays them all the same wage. The parable as Matthew shares it challenges their understanding, and probably ours, of justice and what is seen as fair and right. So why isn't this fair? Well, we see that the latecomers got the same wage as the early workers. But let's go back to the initial scripture reading. The early workers agreed upon a set wage, and they got paid that wage. They were paid what they were promised. The early workers were not cheated out of any of their pay. They got their full pay. The landowner didn't take away part of their pay to pay the latecomers. So what's the problem? Well doesn't seem fair. I'd say most of us would probably agree with their grumbling that I worked all day in the late hot sun and those people worked an hour and why are they getting the same thing I got? In the People's New Testament Commentary by Eugene Boring and Fred Craddock, they had a lot of interesting thoughts on this passage. It says, the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out to hire servants and later hired more and more. Now think about that for a moment. This is a parable to help us understand the kingdom of heaven. Except when the, map, when the writer of Matthew says the kingdom of heaven, he was often implying the kingdom of God. He used the phrase kingdom of heaven because God's name was too holy for the Jewish people to actually write out on a paper. And so the kingdom of God was and is more about life here and now. Equality and generosity for now. now. I would guess that many of you who are listening to this right now are what we would refer to as cradle Christians. You know, people who have been coming to this church or some church since they were babies. Others of you may have been invited as a youth to a youth activity. Others may have married into the church. And there are still others who have come to know Christ very late in life. So I would ask you this, which of those Christians is more deserving and should get into heaven first. If there's a lineup, should those cradle Christians be the first in line? Matthew has used Jesus' parable as an allegory. We are to understand that God is good and generous with grace. The pay offered at the end of the day is equal to all regardless of when you began your work. Now we get some resentment by those ones first hired. They were hired with a contract, given the pay they agreed, but still they grumbled. We are invited by this parable to consider generosity and the equality and grace of God. Can you imagine if that's true for us? That we will receive 
far more than we could ever possibly deserve. God loves us all, every one of us, equally and generously. God loves us when more, with more love than we could possibly ever imagine. When I say us, I mean all of us, all people, not just the ones parked here, not just the ones who are listening through uh, YouTube or Facebook. I'm talking all of us. But you know that we sometimes look at some people and we think those people can't possibly be loved by God. Those people don't deserve to be loved by God. Look at what that person has done and look at how that person is behaving. How can God possibly love those people? Well, I think God can love them the same way God loves each of us, despite our own sins and shortcomings in this life. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, it reads, So God created humankind in God's image. In the image of God, He created them. We're made in God's image, which is an image filled with love, compassion, generosity, equality, justice, grace. We are called to be generous with the grace that we have received and the compassion that we have to share with others. Grace can't be earned by working longer or harder than another. We don't decide or judge who deserves grace. Grace is freely given by God. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Amazing love, now flowing down. From hands and feet that were nailed to a tree. Grace flows down and covers me. It covers me. It covers you. It covers all. Will you pray with me? Oh God, we are grateful for the grace you offer us. We know, oh God, that we are not deserving of your love and mercy. We know that we fall short each day and we give thanks, O oh God, for your grace and your love. Help us, O oh God, to have generous hearts as well, hearts that give freely of the love we have received from you. May we share the grace that flows over all of us. In the name of your Son we pray. Amen. We'd offer an invitation at this time for you to accept Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. For those at home, we'd invite you to commit your life to Christ by simply accepting Him as Lord and Savior. We'd invite you to call us at church or contact us through Facebook Messenger and talk to one of the pastors. For those gathered today, if you have not accepted Christ or if you are looking for a church to be a fuller part of. We would invite you to come forward today in your mask and make that good confession of faith. Reaffirm your faith. Become a fuller part of this church family. We invite you also to prepare for communion at this time as we sing our communion hymn and prepare to share in the Lord's Supper. For we remember that all are indeed welcome at the Lord's table. Let us join in our communion hymn. Yeah. 
concern to share with you and that is the uh, family of Betty M a longtime church musician and mother of Cindy P who is also a church musician and the wife of Jerry who is minister at Woodlawn United Methodist want to keep them in our prayers at this time so thank you let us uh, turn to God with our benediction and our response and just a reminder to come up and Get your bags. If there's someone that lives near you and isn't here today, you can take those for them. That would be great for the children. Thank you. You have been embraced by God's power and love. Dare to face the world. Be careful as you call out upon God and share God's love. Do it with love. Let the scripture guide you in God's truth and love. May God's will and grace and mercy sustain us. Let us go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>